Hey Riz. Oh hi Debs. I'm really stressing out. Why? Because it's just so much to do. There's just I just can't seem to get everything done and just as I get one thing sorted out, another stress turns up and I just can't do with it all. I'm really stressed. Okay Debs, look what I'm reading. Look what I'm reading right now. Good okay. timing, good timing. It's a moment maybe to review Andrew Bernstein's book <sighs> The Myth of Stress. Well that sounds like a plan because I seriously need some help. Okay. So, Debs, what is stress? Tell me, Riz. <laughs> in Bernstein's book, he says we have become a planet of stressed out people who blame one another for how we feel and wonder why we are not happy. That's mm -hmm. why you're always blaming me. And he states that stress costs people the clarity and focus they need to truly reach their potential in the face of ongoing change. Okay. So, Riz, just tell me what stress is. Well, one way of defining stress, Debs, is having a mentally or emotionally disruptive or upsetting condition occurring in response to adverse external influences that are capable of affecting um, your health. But could it be wrong? What? What do you mean wrong? Well, Debs, consider the notion that stress does not exist. It's a myth. It's all in your head. Really? So, if it's all in my head, what's true about it? Well, Debs, what we could say is true, that stress is a mentally or emotionally disruptive yes. and upsetting yes, condition. Yes. Yeah? And it's true that stress does affect your physical yes. health. I agree. And that stress is not just an anxiety about getting things done. And it's also true that stress occurring in, t in response to the adversities of life can be challenged. Okay, so if that's the case, are you saying that stress is a perception hmm. of what I perceive to be when life happens to me? Yes. It's my perception. Yes. Stress is a perceived lack of control okay. as and when life happens, such as death, divorce, physical okay. and mental illness, work and money problems. But what about anxieties such as time constraints or traffic jams or uh, project deadlines and work-life balance? So what about my feelings associated with the loss of control? It's always about you. Yes, it is. I'm stressed right now. I need your help. <laughs> She's not listening. I didn't expect my car journey to take three times longer than it should do. You know, I have clients waiting. It's really stressful. Mm -hmm. It's not on. It's right, just right, not on. All right, Debs. Look, generally, when things like this happen, there is an emotional response. Yes, like anger or frustration. Yeah, and other feelings like jealousy, heartache, sadness, fear, worry, resentment, regret, shame, and, you know, any other negative emotion, big or small. So, Debs, let's look at this historically, what stress looked like. Once upon a time, your ancestors went foraging and came across a saber-toothed tiger. They immediately experienced a surge of adrenaline, giving them the extra energy to fight or run away. That's right, yes. I, I suppose those who had a strong fight or flight response were more likely to survive. I imagine over time this hormonal surge has strengthened and become hardwired into our biology. Into your modern day life, dear. Yes. Yeah. Yes, this is an automatic response to advernal, adverse external influences. So instead of facing the occasional saber toothed tiger and the rare helpful surge of hormones that accompanied mm -hmm. it, I find myself surrounded by challenges on a daily basis. Hence, I'm in a constant state of fight or flight. Yeah. Yes, Debs. Yeah. And as a result, your fight or flight response is going haywire. Unfortunately, Debs, you've become a victim of your own biology. So, Debs, stress is a physical reaction to change, and that's inevitable in life. There's always some change the body must adapt to, and we try to reduce stress by using coping strategies. Such as exercise, mindfulness, yeah, yeah. yoga, Medi meditation, holidays. Vacations, vacations, yeah, massage, medication, alcohol, like champagne. <laughs> or any other kind of addictive behaviour. <laughs> now it's important to emphasise that these coping strategies help to reduce stressful effects that stress produces in the body, but they do not address the cause. So the stress tends to return. Yes, so the key to eliminating my stress is to create a fundamental shift in the way I actually think. Hmm. And it's not just about managing or coping or escaping it. No, yeah? exactly. Mm -hmm. No strategies will work here, Debs. So let's look at what research has revealed when working with rats and stress. Yes, research on rats showed that rats were not stressed because they were reacting non-specifically to heat, cold, starvation and countless other conditions. 
They were stressed because they were upset. So I'm a rat now. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> listen, Debs, Roland, the rat's got nothing on you right now. No, look, listen, look, moving on. The experiment revealed and that stress is not a physical process with a psychological component, mm -hmm. but a, phys a psychological process with a physical component. In other words, Riz, stress doesn't come from what is going on in my life. No. Are you saying it's come from my thoughts about what's going on in my life? Yes. For example, Des, your life is not stressful. Your thoughts about your life are stressful. So are you saying all stress is an inside job? Yeah. Yeah? And it's a result of subconscious beliefs and assumptions. Yes. Stress okay. is a function of your beliefs, not your circumstances. Okay. Sabretooth tigers didn't trigger a fight or flight response in our ancestors. It was their thoughts about them that triggered this response. So then if a tiger sneaked up on them and they had no idea they were there, hmm. they would not have experienced stress. No, they still would have died. Yeah, they would have. They would have died. <laughs> but at least they weren't stressed out. So, if the cave woman saw a tiger, but instead she saw a bunch of reeds, she would have experienced stress, even though there was no tiger, because stress is a psychological process. Until there is a thought, there is no stress. Okay. So are you saying it's a mental process of interpretation? Yeah. Even Andrew Bernstein, in his book, the myth of stress, mm -hmm. he says this is the iron rule of stress. When most of us are stressed out, we are saying that our bodies are having a hard time. What we're really trying to say is I'm emotionally overwhelmed. Yes, I understand that one. So when I'm thinking about my body's ability to balance itself, mm -hmm. for instance, you massaging my shoulders because you're quite good at that, I'm actually failing to stop and think and to recognise if my feelings based on my thought processes are triggering the responses in my body. Mm which is why I'm, why I'm feeling emotionally overwhelmed. Yeah, okay. So it would be useful to stop and check, as the cave woman you are, <laughs> is your stress simply the reeds, or uh, is there real danger, like a tiger? Is your life under immediate stress, Debs? So think about your feelings and feel about your thinking. Now, yeah, so get your head around that. So, Riz, despite what you've said, mm -hmm. I find stress a good thing. Oh, yeah. It motivates me. Mm -hmm. Okay, it can give me the push I need. All right, so what if I said there is no such thing as good stress? Okay, explain, Riz. Well, the fewer negative emotions you live with, the better you will feel. It's okay. important to state that stress is not a motivator. There is a difference between stress and stimulation. Being stimulated is good. Having goals and deadlines and staying engaged is important and motivating. Okay. It's a bit like me. This is when peak performance happens. Yeah. Athletes call this the zone. That magical feeling with great activity. The bottom line is, Debs, stress is a demotivator. But what if I was to say, look, 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 I'm stressed, but look how successful I am. Debs, consider this. If you're succeeding despite your stress, you need to ask yourself to what end? It usually ends in dis-ease, or you demanding that I draw upon my massaging skills. <laughs> yes, darling, your massage skills are great. Yes. And you're saying my stress impacts negatively on my mental and physical health. That's yes, what you're saying. Yes, there is a danger of ultimate burnout and failure. So please, Debs, be careful. So you can do the next video on your own then, okay? Yeah, it's fine. Listen, listen, sweetie. There are plenty of people who want to fill your seat, I'm sure. You're not getting rid of me that easily, Riz. <sighs> Anyway, listen, Riz, um, people would say they feel so stressed, mm -hmm. but so it's hard to consider that it's just a thought process. Look, what you've got to remember is recognising that stress begins in your head instead of your surroundings does not diminish the reality of your experience. So why are you saying that I need to respect the effects on my body mm -hmm. and that my feelings and that my behaviours are very real? Yes, absolutely. Understanding this enables you to address it more strategically at its source. Remember, Debs, the opposite of stress is not relaxation. The opposite of stress is education. Stress is relieved through gaining insight. Wow, that's insightful. <laughs> Hello, 
Einstein said, you can't resolve a problem with the same mind that created it. So let me think. If I were a fish mm -hmm. and was asked to describe water, yeah. I can't. Mm. I'm too consumed by my surroundings. Mm. Yeah. Therefore, are you saying that I have to be open to seeing something new? Yes. Okay. Which means you need to challenge your own beliefs, even though they may seem undeniably true. What is true is that you're not a rat, you're not a fish, or even a cave woman. However, Debs, taking time to reflect on your day using the ability of hindsight helps you become more insightful. Insight means seeing into a situation more clearly, and the more you see into it, change can take place. That's exciting, Liz, because then I suppose this will allow me to shift my perspective on a situation and to think through consciously what changes I need to make. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. But you've got to start with small steps, steps, small steps. Stress may seem to disappear when you're proactive with stress-busting activities such as exercise. Drinking champagne. Yeah. Or having a massage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or just thinking positively. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. But despite that, negative beliefs that create stress remain <coughs> deeply held in the mind. They refuse to leave and they have, until they have metaphorically been dug up from their roots. Yeah. So I imagine if I start slowly and take small steps, it can result in me experiencing profound changes in the way I feel and how I act. Yes, yeah. spot on Debs. Okay. You're a really fast learner. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> can you give me some suggestions though on what those small steps can be? Absolutely, here we go. You can talk to friends and family, but be mindful however. Oh, yes, because they're too close mm. to me or my situation and they may have the same restricting thought processes as I do. Yeah. More than likely, Toby, more than likely. You could start or join a group. I suppose this could give me the benefit of a different um, perceptions and, su and suggestions from mm -hmm. other people, mm -hmm. yeah? They're not so close to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and group work can be very powerful in creating change, or you could find a therapist. Working with a professional who understands and can work through the change process with you in a, in a confidential and non-judgmental setting. Okay, well I'm left with, <laughs> I'm left with one final thought, Riz. What's that, Debs? Insight heals us, yes. not time.